Hi guys, now the fight in this video is not going to be new to those of you who are watching my stream yesterday. Uh, yesterday I was trying out the Blood Angels for the first time after their buff, and I was playing around with Ralderon making both Drop Pod focused as well as Requiem focused decks, and I ended up concluding that uh, Drop Pod works better. At the end of my stream I had a fantastic fight against a Conrad Curse, and in this video we're going to take a look at how that fight went down. Before that, this is my deck for the Blood Angels. I'm still missing many key cards for the Blood Angels, especially the Spear of Telesto, but um, this deck seemed to be sort of working so far and it's just going to get better as my collection improves. Alright, enough of that, let's go ahead and see Ralderon versus Conrad Curse slash Night Hunter. Alright, so as the match begins, I look at my uh, cards in my hand and I'm putting away the expensive ones. I really want units and things I can play in the first couple of turns. So the two clothes and dreadnoughts to go back down. Alright, Nighthunter has the initiative but he decided to pass on the first turn. Uh, so it comes over to me. Instead of playing a troop I take advantage of the fact there's not much on the board to play my special ability from Ralderon. And I choose Spear of Telesto, which is, of course, one of the cards I just don't have. Alright, so it looks as though he's now trying to race up to 10 energy to turn into the Night Haunter. So usually I try not to be too aggressive, uh, but against Conrad Curse, my goal is usually to kill him before turn 10, before the 10 energy turn. So he just goes ahead, he breaks open my drop pod to stop my landing ability triggering and he heals himself, so he's trying to keep his health as high as he can until he becomes the Night Haunter. Coming over to my turn though, I can play the last stand on my squad and take out his medic unit and now I'm doing 10 points of damage to him in one turn, so we are now on equal health and I have a unit on the board. He's spending the turn lowering the attack on that unit, he's cutting it down to two attack and then wiping it off the map. Alright, comes over to my five energy turn. So what I'm going to do here is play uh, my two drop pod troops. Let's see if he can stop both effects from triggering and I'm just going to attack him to keep the pressure going there. He comes back with uh, Unrath's Chosen I think. Curse is chosen, right. So this is where that uh, Spear of Telesto could have been useful, but instead I'm playing Aratan on that, which deals four points of damage to it and stuns it. And that leaves one point of energy, which I can use on Ralderan's special ability to kill it and buff the neighboring troops. Now we attack Curse again. We're doing a lot of damage to him, but it feels like it might not be enough to stop him from turning into the Night Haunter. He's continuing to try to uh, whittle down my troops, so it takes out one of them and then heals Curse with the second guy. And then makes sure I don't buff that troop, so it goes away as well. Alright, as we come into my 7 energy turns, I'm holding off on using Eli Janus because I want to combine him with the Judgment of Angels after, well just in case Curse turns into Night Haunter. And I need a way of stunning him, so he, there's at least one turn when he's not invisible. Okay, look at that, he's continuing to just uh, weaken my units and taking them out without losing anything in return. Okay, next turn he becomes the Night Haunter, so it does not feel like I can stop it. So I'm just going to drop my Dreadnought for now and take out his troop. Let's see what happens now. He's on 13 health, so he pops the drop pod to make sure it doesn't get the cleave ability, which would obviously hurt him while he's in stealth, and he triggers his madness. So we're on roughly even health, I have a powerful unit on the board, but he has invisibility. So let's try and protect my units, I'm going to drop Venerable Jophiel. Even if he has the hard removal tactic, there we go, Spectre of Judgment, it means that I should still have that Dreadnought around next turn and he wouldn't be visible. Oh. I was hoping he, he would not be invisible and then I could just hit him twice, but of course what he's done there is stop my units from attacking. 
Alright, so I'm going to drop the saver and terminator because I really need that dreadnought to live. And that's it. I'm deliberately not playing my Mellory squad because in case he gets rid of the terminators, he, it's too easy for him to become invisible by hitting the Mellory squad. Ugh. Okay, so now he's bringing in one of his dreadnoughts. Mm, let's take a look here. Let's bring in Eli Janus now. With Judgment of Angels going off on Eli Janus, he'll be able to stun Curse with his ability as well as hit the Dreadnought. And now I can use Raldoran's remaining energy to destroy that. And now I can bring in Melorus Squad. Some bonus damage. Unless, I think he's already played both of his Pi Alpha so he cannot unstun himself now. Unless he has the tactic which does that. Okay, so he's just trying to thin out my board, taking out some of my powerful units before Re uh, Requiem abilities trigger on them. Okay, we're going to use the Dreadnought's ability there and attack. And I think, yeah, we have enough to finish him off here now, so... Oh, wait, actually no, my Dreadnought can't attack him. It has no attack. Ah, oh well. This should be enough to finish him though, uh, even if he goes invisible, I've got several cards, a couple of cards in hand which are going to be able to uh, make him um, invisible again. So he's just dropping a bunch of troops including Endos Shrek, and as expected he attacks one of my powerful units and becomes invisible and he's hoping that he'll be able to keep pulling this off till the match is over. But of course, I have a prophecy revealed which well reveals Conrad Kurtz and then my dreadnought can finish him off all right so that was a match which hopefully gives you an example of how the blood angels can now play after the couple of buffs which they've had uh, as I said my collection is not complete because I'm missing a couple of their key cards and yet, I'm getting a decent-ish win rate, even with a bat, with an incomplete collection. I was overall around 50%, I think, uh, maybe a little under 50% by the time I was I had perfected my drop pod deck yesterday. So from my final deck onwards, I was winning around half the matches. All right. So my conclusion: Blood Angels definitely seem much more viable now. Uh, I probably for my next video, I want to try and see if. Uh, Korbak's Utter Blight is as completely bad as people say, so I'll, I'll be trying to play around with him next, I think. Alright, until then, bye for, bye for now, everyone.